The Scottish Crofting Federation grew out of the Crofters' Union that was formed in 1985 to represent crofters. Crofters occupy land within the highlands and islands that's covered by crofting legislation. Crofting is essential for a local community. We can produce our own eggs, we can produce our own beef, sheep, lamb, we can produce our own vegetables, potatoes, we can even sell it to the local community and that way towns, villages can benefit from the crofting environment. If the croft is made to make money and to keep the youngsters there and that's what we're thriving to do, it can only be good for the crofting communities. You've got, you know, the older generation, it's, all of a sudden you've got a gap that's nobody there to work it, and then you're back to the old story of everything just getting run down. So it's quite important for the young crofters to come on courses or, or, or get involved more and more. Um, yeah, it's tough, but if it's in them, they'll do it. I'm Donald McCangus, um, a crofter near Tain, Fendham Farm, and uh, I think the, the outlook for crofting is really bright. It's a, it's a great life, you know, there's a lot of people come into crofting from the cities and it's uh, really enjoyable. There's not a lot of money to be made of it, obviously. It's a lot of hard work. On the East Coast, it's probably a lot easier to be a crofter because of better climate, less midges, nearer the markets. We can't depend solely on the croft. To be honest, I mean, we're doing so many other things as well. We let out a few properties. We've actually started renting out some of the, the ground that's not a croft. Doing a bit of contract work as well to bring in an extra few pound. And just in a, won't turn any job down, really. <laughs> Education and training is really important to keep aspects of crofting in people's consciousness and to encourage new people and young people into crofting. There's a potential danger that skills and knowledge in crofting get lost with the old folk. And what we're doing is overlapping old folk with young folk in our training programme. We moved to this croft um, when I was 10. I've got two little girls. One's three and one's four, there's only a year between them, and they also are crofting mad. They love being out with the sheep. I've just finished a lambing this year. They've spent 12 hours a day out in the lambing pens with me, climbing on bales, having great fun. New crofts, or at least getting hold of crofts which are currently not being used at all, uh, is one of the biggest priorities. And of course, it isn't just about land, it's also about housing. Uh, we have population which is just getting older and older. This is one of the very few places uh, pretty much the only place actually in this township which has any children um, and that, that's no kind of recipe for the future. People tend to look at crofting as something old-fashioned and the point that we want to make is that we're looking for sustainability in, in everything of course and what's made crofting resilient is the fact that it works with nature, it works with community and has developed its own long-term resilience. So crofting's looked at now by other people in other countries as something that they would like as a model to take forward sustainable land use. Crofting's about a future, a sustainable future. In order to protect that future, we need a unified voice. We need crofters standing together and speaking for themselves. That's what we do in the Scottish Crofting Federation.